Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today's video is going to focus on a rainwater collection system. Now, you don't need much for this. I have a tarp, cordage and stakes to suspend it with, of course a couple trees or some upright poles you're going to cut in order to suspend your tarp, and two 55 gallon bin liners. Now when you're looking for a location to su suspend your tarp, you, you, of course you need to have a couple trees or you need to come up with some way that you're going to suspend your tarp at least shoulder height. And once you've found that you know, area, you really need to look at the ground because the ground needs to be as level as possible in order for us to make our cistern to catch the rainwater. Behind me, I found just the perfect spot I'm gonna go ahead and suspend my tarp, and then I'll bring you back and show you how I'm going to create a cistern using the 55 gallon bin liners. I've suspended my tarp just on one side. The next thing I'm going to do is before I stretch this out, I'm gonna pull it out to check where the end of it's going to be, and then I'm gonna clear this area out of all the twigs and all the debris that's underneath of it, and then I'm gonna build my cistern. Now I've ch checked the length of my tarp, goes out from where I am about another uh, meter, meter and a half. And I've got all the debris cleared away, all the twigs and things like that because we don't want anything to puncture our cistern. Now the way this is going to work is the tarp is going to be stretched out. I'm going to use Y sticks to uh, stake out the two corners and I'm going to use another cordage to pull the center downward. So it creates a V. That's going to be the funnel that's going to feed the cistern. The cistern, one end of it is going to be just beyond the edge of the tarp. And the rest of the cistern is going to go back under the tarp. That way it keeps debris, leaves, twigs, other things like that from getting into our rainwater. Now in order to make the cistern, I'm just gonna look around the forest floor and find some pretty decent sized deadfall. And I'm gonna use that as a frame in order to lay out my 55 gallon bin liner into it to create a basin for the cistern. Now I have my frame built, just deadfall that I found laying around the forest floor. And this is going to create walls for my 55 gallon bin liner to be able to drape into and basically create the basin of the cistern. Now what we're going to do, we're going to prepare the bin liner to be able to create the basin. What I need to do is I need to remove the sealed end of the bin liner. You use a knife, I have a pair of scissors with me, and we'll remove that seal. And then we are going to locate a loose crease. Like that right there, it goes all the way down, only a single thickness, and we are going to cut along that crease. If you're using scissors, this should go really, really fast and really, really easy. If you're using a knife, it's going to be a little bit more precarious, but you can most certainly do it, especially if you have a good, sharp, smaller knife. Pocket knife would work great for this, like an open L, super sharp. This is going to be our basin. Now we're going to spread out our thin liner. And try to center that to where it's draping over 
all of the sides and it looks pretty good and now what we're going to do we're going to use things like uh, more deadfall to put on the edges of the tarp here's a big old rock i can use and we just want to make certain that we have enough weight on the edges Now the tarp, water feeding system, the cistern is all in place. I'm going to bring it up closer to show you some of the features that I'm using in order to maximize the effectiveness of the tarp to be able to fill the cistern. On both of the front corners that are on the low end, I placed a Y stick to elevate those corners. And in the center, I have my line going out to a stake. And on top of that line, a 550 cord, I have a log and I have a rock. The rock is sitting right on the frame on top of the 55 gallon bin liner on top of the line. And as the water comes down, it's going to hit that rock and filter back into the basin. And hopefully I'll be able to collect quite a bit of water. This is the view from under the tarp. As you can see, the entire basin, minus about maybe a foot on the very front end of it, is under the tarp. So it's going to keep most of the debris out. And I know a little bit of uh, the dirt is going to wash off of the rock as the water hits it. But it's going to settle on the very bottom of this. And it should be deep enough that I can ladle out of this with my water bottle cup and if we get a decent rain this thing should fill up in a matter of minutes and i'm estimating i could probably have about 35 40 gallons of water in there when it's all said and done folks it happened the unthinkable the weatherman was right we did get some rain and it rained for a good hour and a half to two hours and because of that rain we got plenty of water let's take a look now i would say that is easily five gallons of water plus now if you had an area that already had a natural depression or you were to dr dig a, a fairly decently sized trough and build this same type of a cistern uh, setup you could easily capture up to 30 gallons of water now i could do some math and i could measure out um, the amount of depth versus width and length and determine the amount of cubic inches that are in here and then work a formula to where cubic inches equals X amount of gallons. But I ain't gonna do that. I'm not gonna do it. Sometimes math just needs to be someplace else. All I know is that I've got a lot of excellent pure drinking water. Now, this water has, has been in here um, maybe a, an hour, maybe two, and there's been no critters coming in, bathing in it or anything. So it's, it's pure drinking water. The only thing that I w am going to do is to make certain that I strain out any of the particulate matter, like any type of debris. I just want to uh, sift that stuff out of there and strain that off. So I've got my cotton bandana which I'm certain every single one of you have a cotton bandana in your kit too and I'm just going to ladle that off it is so deep it's as uh, it's going up to my knuckles right there and um, and everything is perfectly calmed down and I can easily get almost in a completely full cup with every Time that I, I dip this cup in here 
Got to let my bandana get good and soaked before it starts straining out. There we go. So if I if I if I was just going to drink this water, I, I could drink it with whatever's in there. I can just like spit it out because it's it's nothing harmful. It's just stuff. Um, there might be a bug or two in there, but I can see that in my cup before I really start doing anything with it. There we go. But I'm going to go ahead and continue to ladle this in and let that strain on out. I gotta remember to keep a uh, decent sized rubber band with me when I'm doing stuff like this. It's straining really fast now because the uh, cotton bandana is finally soaked through. That's about two thirds full. And that was what, four? Four ladles out of it. And. Oh, wow. Now, this is a weird thing to say, but I'm certain there are some of you folks out there that are watching this that have never drank rainwater and it tastes so much different than the water you get out of your tap now if you have a, a really great stream that's uh, spring fed this will probably be the closest type of water that you can drink from spring fed but the one thing you're going to have with spring fed water that you don't have with rainwater is you're going to have minerals in it and minerals are incredibly important to our metabolism. And you don't get minerals with rainwater. You just get the water. And that's one of the reasons why it tastes so different. And if you travel, you know, great distances between your camping locations and you are drinking from spring fed or glacier fed streams, every single one of those places you go the water is going to taste a little different you may not notice it sometimes you may notice it very uh, distinctively but the water will taste a little bit different from place to place even though it's perfectly pure drinking water because of the mineral concentration that's in it and the very type of minerals that are in the water it's going to taste different but anyway the rainwater tastes absolutely fantastic and for a camp if it's not going to rain anymore i have enough water here for two days of pretty decent water use cooking cleaning drinking easily two days from this amount of amount of water and that's being very generous with the water usage that you take in and whether you're cleaning um, you're washing up your dishes, you're, uh, you know, uh, doing a lot of uh, cooking with water, you're doing a lot of uh, freeze-dried meals. This is a tremendous amount of water. Easily two days, uh, possibly maybe even three or four if you can serve it. So if you're in a location to where your water source is pretty far away and, you know, you don't want to make those, those distances time and time again to get water, Something like this is a perfect setup to have in your camp. And as long as you, you're going to have one day of rain, and if you construct your uh, cistern correctly and be a little more creative other than just laying her out on the ground like I did, you easily could get 30 gallons. Let's just say for the sake of saying so that I set my cistern up in a natural depression or I dug a trough. 
and I was able to get that 30 gallons of water, which I'm quite confident you could easily do with this cistern setup. And it's right there in my camp. I'm gonna be in camp for several days. The one thing I don't want to have happen is anything get into my water supply to contaminate it. So this is where the second bin liner comes in. You prepare this exactly the same way that you did with the first bin liner and basically turn it into a great big black rectangular sheet of plastic. You drape it over top of it and you put logs or rocks along the edges to hold it snug and cover it up. You keep debris out of it. If the wind picks up, you don't have to worry about leaves or twigs, things like that getting in it. It's just less things you have to strain out of the water. That is water that's in your camp. Water that's in your camp. The water that I've got over there, 300, 350 yards, great water. But I have to hike all the way over there to get it. And I have to carry the water back. If this, if, even if this was only five gallons of water, okay, that's 40 pounds of weight coming from one stream. There's no way in the world I'm going to hike back 40 pounds of water in one trip. So that's multiple trips back and forth. So I'm certain you can begin to see the convenience and the energy savings and the time saving that setting up this type of a water procurement system will do for you. Water in camp that you don't have to hike for, you don't have to carry it, it's there. And when you're ready to go, all you have to do is pull out a corner of where that is. If you're set up like, like mine is, it's just on the ground. And you pull out a, a corner, it drains out, you shake off your things, you roll them up, you put them in your pack, over and done with. Super easy. It probably is going to tear down much faster than setting it up and sto storing much faster than get, digging it out and setting it up. So it's an incredibly effective and it's an incredibly convenient way to have water in your camp. Well, folks, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.